So you need to bring something to the Christmas potluck, but you don't want to put in the requisite effort to make a classic showstopper like croquembouche. Sure, it's a seasonal favorite that makes you seem worldly when you present it and highly sophisticated when you explain the name means crunch in the mouth, but making one the right way would involve the baking of several dozen profiteroles, filling each one with cream, making your own caramel, and carefully adhering each one into tower formation before enrobing the whole thing in thin wisps of molten sugar. It's a bit laborious. Luckily, a lot of grocery stores sell pre-made profiteroles under the name Cream Puffs, and they're usually pretty good. But then you'd still have to make your own caramel, which requires a candy thermometer and delicate care with a watchful eye. Is it really worth the trouble? But grocery stores also sell pre-made hard caramel candies under the name Werther's Originals. If you combine a full five ounce bag of unwrapped hard candies with one tablespoon of butter and two tablespoons of cream, it'll melt down into the perfect consistency. You'll need to use your smallest burner and set it to a low heat, but the only action you need to take is stirring it around while the hard candy transforms into a taffy consistency, then a gluey one, and finally into a smooth, lumpless sauce. Remember, there are three main steps to croquembouche production. The store-bought cream puffs took care of step one, the cheater's caramel took care of step two, and so all that's left is to stack each puff into a tall and narrow tower. Technically, you could also cheat at this final step. I've seen people press each coated cream puff into a lubed up bunt before inverting and unmolding it, but the results are, in my opinion, so significantly off that you stand to miss the point. Even though this video concept and this unshaven face is all about choosing the lazy path, please allow me to show you how to hand build a proper conical croquembouche that's still pretty easy. First, understand that you need to treat hot molten sugar with respect for its ability to harm you. I put on a cotton glove and then a nitro glove on top. The cotton protects my hand from heat and the outer layer means I won't be covered in a sticky mess. Keep the molten candy over low heat so that it stays runny. Grab a frozen mini cream puff and dip it in the sauce deep enough to cover two thirds of its circumference. You need each piece to adhere not just to the surface underneath it but also to the puff beside it. This first layer is probably the hardest part because you have to decide how big to make the base. If you only want to make a small dessert with a box of 30 profiteroles, which would be enough for each person in a party of six to eat four to five pieces, start with a base layer that's seven pieces in circumference. Then on the next layer, you can use six pieces. Attach them at a bit of an angle so that they can make a smooth slope towards the top. Do it again with five pieces, then four, three, two, and maybe one on top for good measure. There'll be a couple left over in your box of 30, but that leaves you a margin of error for any ugly ones that might be in your box. This is what a 28 piece croquembouche looks like on an eight inch plate. To me, the smaller ones are just a little sad. I'd rather croak the biggest bouche I can fit in my fridge. This one's about 80 pieces and it goes all the way to the edges of that eight inch plate. But there's still one finishing touch to add. It's traditional to entomb the whole cone in thin, wispy strands of hard caramel. Although it's technically acceptable to have thick, gloopy ropes dripping down the dessert's face, it's in the spirit of the dish to exercise as much finesse as you can muster. This should be a dessert fit for the North Pole, not Peter North's pole. If you dip a fork or an offset spatula in the warm candy and pull it straight up, you'll get a strand that firms up in the room temperature air. It's at this point when it's a little firm that you should use a circular motion to stretch that candy web around the dessert. There are people out there who can do this in a spectacular fashion. I can do a passable job, but if I may rant for a little while while I work, what I won't do in face of my shortcomings is insist that actually, it's the people who aim to do it perfectly that are wrong. There's a certain constituency of viewers that have made themselves known in the comments of my pretty smoothie video, uniting around this idea that it's superfluous to consider the appearance of food instead of regarding it as a resource to be simplified, quantified, and converted to fuel for activities as noble as penning comments online. I'd say I don't know where this idea of an artless utopia is coming from, but Google serves me audience analytics rich enough to suggest that maybe, just maybe, videos based around ideas like the real secret to perfect French macarons is to disregard their appearance completely are leading to a couple dinguses who are about to be pretty excited about the coal in their stocking this year because actually it's our remarkably productive fuel source. Think of this dish like a gingerbread house, except one that's actually edible. After all, this is gonna taste exactly how you'd expect it, like commodity grade cream puffs with a crunchy portion of Werther's on the outside. And that's going to be true whether the decoration on the outside ends up looking beautiful or miserable. But the point of making it lies within the drama, the tedium, and the revelry of building something beautiful. If you're not meeting up for an annual Sand Mandala Club meeting, how often are you able to partake in the bittersweet poetry of destroying something over which you deliberately toiled? Too dramatic for you? Get your Gaudi on, let the goo fall where it may, and cover it all up with fancy sprinkles. I got this holiday multi-pack for four bucks at Walmart. 
this semi-homemade masterpiece is now complete. Stick it in the fridge if you made it the day before you actually need to serve it. You definitely want to serve it within 36 hours of assembly. Over time, the moisture from the cream puffs will soften the hard candy and everything will start to fall apart in a really slow and ugly way, like a recipe script poisoned by a third act that's really just a public airing of grievances. Happy Festivus, you lazy pigs.